Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with MEM. One of the things that people get really confused about when they first start using MEM is when they're supposed to use tags and when they should be using bi-directional links. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, when tags make the most sense and when bi-directional links make the most sense. And if you wanna learn more about how to take smart notes that become far more useful as you capture more notes and make it possible to create content faster than you've ever thought possible before, be sure to check out our free course on how to take smart notes. I'll be sure to include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to the video. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this video tutorial was because one of the questions that people ask me frequently and something that trips a lot of people up is when you're supposed to use tags and when you're supposed to use bi-directional links. And the key to knowing that is understanding how information organized in a network is different than information organized in a hierarchy. So a hierarchy is typically what you find in most note-taking apps like Dropbox or Notion where you get folders, subfolders, and files or pages, subpages, and tasks. Whereas in Notion, what you need to, or in MEM, what you need to realize is that your MEMs are not notes in a database, but they're nodes inside of a network. And so that really helps to understand how to think about when to use bi-directional links and when to use tags. So before I show you examples inside of MEM, one of the things that helps is to think about examples outside of the digital world. And there are two examples that came to mind when I was preparing for this video, and they're books by Ryan Holiday and Stephen Pressfield. So if you look at Stephen Pressfield's latest book, uh, Put Your Ass Where Your Heart Wants to Be, and you actually go back and read one of his previous books, what you'll see is that title was actually one sentence in a previous book, and he took that one sentence and he turned it into an entirely new book. Or if you've read Ryan Holiday's story, Stoicism trilogy, the obstacle is the way, ego is the enemy and stillness is the key. If you go back and read those books very closely, what you'll see is that the book that follows is always based on one idea that he introduces in the previous book, and then he takes that idea and he expands on it. And so that's really helpful to think about this idea of using bi-directional links to connect ideas. So let's get into a couple of examples here. So. One other thing that you want to keep in mind, and this is something that comes from our interview with Sanka Ahrens on The Unmistakable Creative, is that the best use of bidirectional links is to embed links in a full sentence. And this is why it's very important that you title your mems in such a way, particularly if they're notes that you want to be able to use to create content in a way that you can use them in other sentences. So let's go into one example here. So this is just an example of a note called Personal Network of Knowledge, where I just started writing some things down. And you'll see here that I've completed sentences in this note with other bi-directional links. And in some cases, these links actually have nothing in them. And other times we actually have notes where we've actually made <coughs> connections to other notes that have content in them. And the thing that is important here is that this allows you to capture ideas as they occur to you. And not only that, you can actually go back and trace your thought process as to what sparked that idea because you know what note it came from. Because a lot of times what happens is you write down an idea and then when you go back to that idea, you have no idea what it was about or what sparked it. But this allows you to retrace your line of thought so that you can see what you were thinking that led to that note. And so that's the thing you wanna think about is when you're trying to use bi-directional links inside your notes and make connections to other notes, you don't want to just add links, but try to embed those links in a sentence. So this is an example of how we do this with a note. Now, let's go ahead and look at how we would do this for something like an article. So right now I'm working on an article titled, Why Task Completion is a Terrible Way to Measure Your Productivity. And what you'll notice if you look throughout this article is that I've actually embedded different notes into all the sentences that I've written here. In some cases, what I've done is I've actually just combined entire notes using Mem Spotlight, where I can just take each one of these and turn them into notes. So in a lot of ways, you're able to take an atomic approach to creativity where every individual note can become part of your creative output, and then you can combine them together to create a new blog post. So you can see here, Throughout this post, there are numerous bi-directional links, but each of those links is embedded into a sentence. And that makes linking much more valuable. So the real idea here behind bi-directional links is that you wanna often use bi-directional links to make connections between your ideas. 
So now in the next part, I'll go into examples of how you go for tags. So one other thing that people will ask is well, what about projects? Now projects are probably the one exception to this. And in projects, for example, what you'll probably want to do is you will have a bunch of resources that are linked. So for example, these are some of my current projects. So you can see here, this is the October cohort for maximize your output. And you can see here that I have a bunch of different notes here. So this might be the one exception to the whole idea of making connections, using links to make connections between your ideas versus just adding them. So in the next section, I'll show you when to use tags instead of links. All right. So now let's talk about when you want to use tags. So as I said, the whole key idea behind here is to understand that nodes in MEM are nodes in a network, not nodes in a database. And the key idea here is that you want to use tags to connect categories or make groups of nodes basically associate with one particular tag. So here's an example right here of our marketing funnels. So anytime I write an individual email for a product launch or anything else I'm working on, it gets the tag can pick an email. And let's say that I want to put together a group of campaign emails, then it gets the tag launch sequence. So if you are on our email list, you'll see some of this might look familiar because you probably received this launch sequence recently. And so all the different launch sequences are right here. So for example, there's MYO launch sequence 1.3. And if I click on launch sequence, it'll bring up all the different launch sequences that we've had. And this is the one that went out to our newsletter most recently, but every individual email gets the tag campaign email. So that way I know which is which, and this actually helps you understand how to tag by context. So for example, this right here is a group of campaign emails, which we give the tag launch sequence, whereas this is an individual campaign email, which gets the tag campaign email. And, and the way that you really want to think about tags is something that Tiago Forte says, and that is to tag by context instead of topic, because topics are infinite and contexts are finite. And if you haven't watched it, watch the video on how to simplify and organize your tags. So let me show you one more example of what this looks like in MEM. So here you'll see that I have the tag UC transcript for my resources. And I actually don't even bother tagging them as resources because I know what they are. And all I have to do is search for transcript. But anytime I want to find a transcript, all I have to do is do a search based on that tag. And I can bring up all of the different transcripts I have. And then for book notes, I have uh, anything that is a series of book notes or reference notes right here. They all get the tag books. So again, the two core ideas to take away from this are when you use bi-directional links, the goal is to make connections between ideas. And when you use tags, you're making connections between categories. As always, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below.